if this video gets a million views, I'll get a no dig tattoo, so. <laughs> wow, that is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> now this is a forest. That is incredible. Look at the color on that. They are ginormous, they're almost ready. So I get asked a lot on my videos, what do you want? <laughs> they're all convinced I want something, aren't they? I don't want to get demonetized. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Today is an unbelievably momentous day for me. They say don't meet your heroes, but today I'm actually gonna be meeting one of mine. We are on our way to Home Acres, the home and farm of legendary grower, Charles Dowden, someone that has inspired me when I first started out on my growing journey three years ago and taught me so much. And he's probably taught you guys so much too. So we're gonna go to Home Acres and find out all about Charles Dowden visit the farm, hopefully cook for him as well. Well, guys, welcome yes. to Homo, because I didn't expect this. <laughs> I am absolutely honored to be here. This, in terms of a garden, is absolute goals. It's like an art exhibition. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's a really nice way you put it, because I like it to be beautiful. And vegetables, I think, for a long time have, have not been appreciated for that side of what they can give you. Yeah, it's so true. I think that being a chef, I've always tried to sort of hero the natural look of the ingredients. I'm just looking at this chard here, the veins yeah, exactly. on, on chard. Yeah. It looks almost like a human vein. It's just, it's beautiful. Well, it's just related, I guess. Um, in some ways, I find that that makes harvest difficult because you harvest something that's gone sometimes, like a beautiful mm. broccoli or cauliflower. That's true. Um, but is. here, also, this is with no dig because this is all no dig, obviously. So. so just for my audience that may not be familiar with no dig, just if you could just explain the process of how and how you got into it. Yeah, well, it's... I know you've probably said this story so many times. No, no, it's, it, it, it's very simple to explain, though. It, it is literally minimal disturbance. For most plants you grow, you don't need to disturb the soil except to make a little hole to put them in. Yeah. And then you're feeding the soil life. It's the soil life that does all the work for us. So that's the fungal network, the bacteria, the protozoa, the worms, the centipedes, the spiders, yeah. beetles, everything. They're yeah. all doing things all the time. Well, it's amazing since, you know, obviously starting a no-dig garden myself and seeing the amount of life just in that soil. It's, yeah, it's when did incredible. you start yours then? Two and a half years ago now. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, and I, and I just, after watching your videos, went straight to, to no-dig because I just thought that seemed to be the easiest and the most sort of common sense way of growing food. Oh, well, that pleases me to hear that. That's what it is with no-dig because you, you're copying nature. Yeah, that that's so sense. true. It's, why, yeah, it's why a dig? forest floor. You know, it's, people say to me, why no dig? And I would say instead, well, why dig actually? I yeah. don't know how this all came about. So uh, tell me a little bit what you've got growing here then. Well, that's cabbages, which have been in the ground for nine days precisely. Wow. And they follow garlic. So we had a big garlic harvest there. And that's filled crack, which will make big heads, I hope, by oh, October. In October. And granite up there, which is big red heads. So I want to make a lot of sauerkraut and things like yes. that. Yes. Oh, that's something I'm getting into now because Isn't of the abundance. It? And oh. it's, well, just yeah. one charred plant alone will produce yeah. so much charge. You, you're almost yeah. at to a point, what am I going to do with it? So yeah. recently we did a charred kraut on the channel and it's like, oh, it tastes ah. delicious. It's good for you, but also it preserves the food for so much longer. Yeah. What a it's, good idea. Yeah, it's, doing there's so much you can do. Right or kimchi, anything, can't you? Exactly, yeah. And, and those methods of preserving have been sort of lost. So, so is gardening. But the more yeah. I'm starting to garden, the more I'm having to learn to, to um, preserve. But it's actually so yeah. enjoyable and it tastes great. Well, it's a great overlap, isn't it? And that's what I love about your work is, you know, you're, you're a chef mm. originally, aren't you? So yeah. you've got all those skills and training which you can bring to this and share those. It's so true. I actually feel like I was never a chef until now, until I started growing food, because I didn't know where my oh, food came from. Wow. And whenever I go to restaurants now, I'm always wondering where the food, the ingredients have come from, and do the waiters know, or do the chefs yeah. know? And it, it, it's so important. I think when I eventually have my restaurant, the farm will be next door. Yeah, so These I try and beans. grow um, lots of flowers at the end of the beds because it, it's you know just works nicely having them not too much in the way yeah uh, but I, I really appreciate flowers for the insects they bring and it's, the beauty of yeah them. something that i've learnt in my second year of growing actually is, is the importance of flowers and it look okay. it makes the the area look beautiful but things yeah. like my calendula that i'm, I'm growing my chamomile these are so uh, yeah, medicinal i would be careful with calendula oh you know the soft seeding oh yeah i've noticed that but i don't mind <laughs> okay it's popping up okay. everywhere and i'm like it's so beautiful. But that's uh, why I concentrate, oh, you probably see quite a lot. There's some there, for example, marigold, the yeah. um, dwarf French marigold. That, that's right, yeah. And I love the onion flowers. They are, they are something yeah, spectacular. Yeah, do you know what? I've been scratching my head about these um, 
That's, I think that might be a hoverfly there, which yeah. is a nice sign. They're perennial leeks, I think. Oh, they're leeks? Yeah, they keep coming yeah. back. Wow, <laughs> sorry. But they just look beautiful at the yeah. end of the bed. Charles, can I ask you one burning question I've had on my mind? What, what was the first thing you, you ever grew? Because I remember it was only three years ago and that was a radish and it was typically a radish because that's the, the quickest thing uh, to grow, and probably well, the easiest thing. Funnily enough, it was the first seeds I ever sowed, vegetables, was carrots. Oh. And I looked at the instructions on the seed packet and it said, you can sow these seeds from January. So I followed the instructions, sowed them in January, and got it's nothing. Too cold. <laughs> yeah, too cold. Really. Yeah. Then I had to buy more seeds, of course. Maybe that's what they want. But going forwards, I re-sowed. I, I made a mound actually, um, not like a hoogle, but mm. just twigs, and, and I got a nice warm south side, and it sowed again in March, and harvested these lovely carrots by the end of May. And when was so this? That was my first. That was 1981. Wow. Oh, right. and you were hooked, years ago. You were hooked ever since. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I just knew then, and I've always been passionate about eating it. Yeah, you know, like you. For me, that's at least half of it. Yeah, and and would you say that growing food? I mean, it's probably a, a, an easy answer, but would you say growing food, particularly with no dig as well, would be more nutritious? I'd love to know more about yeah, that. Yeah, that's something that maybe needs a bit of sciencey. Yeah, stuff, well, well, yeah. What is science? You know, this can get us through quite deep. <laughs> yeah. ground, actually, I don't want to get demonetised. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> You can see that the plants just look happy and strong and as though they really want to be there. Mm. So for me that says that has to be nutritious food. You know, that's, they're just rooting deeply and they've got all they need. Yeah. And I just think the combination of a variety growing together, obviously that's the ethics yeah. of permaculture. Well, but... Yeah, um, but that's the beauty of no dig as well, because soil is so much more healthy. Mm. That, you know with organic gardening, you, you do the four year rotation thing. Right. So you have all your brassicas together, all your alliums, all your uh, potatoes, and then something else, the, the rest. Uh, and so you have blocks and you have everything divided in four and it, it looks a bit less, mm. uh, more regular than this. And yeah. I deliberately go for more of a patchwork effect. Yeah. So I grow some onions there, some there, and some over there, and so on. And, and I think that helps actually. And with no dig, because it's also healthy, you don't need to worry about rotation. That's, that's my take on it. Yeah, that definitely I makes don't. sense. <laughs> and I love how you interplant the different varieties and how it colors. almost looks like a, you could have a painting on your wall of, of you, you a really salad could, bed of yours. You? Yeah. But what have we got here? Well, these are actually endive here endive. Uh, that we planted yesterday. And then there's some red lettuce, then there's some green lettuce, and there's some Batavian lettuce, which is my favourite for picking. These will start cropping in about three weeks, probably. They're usually three weeks between planting out and cropping. And then we keep picking the outer leaves and they crop for another eight weeks or so. I've got this uh, variety. Oh, Actually, have you? What is well, this that's one? Maravilla di Verona. Uh, the reason I have it is because I got a random magic lettuce oh, seed pack oh, from okay. real seeds and that was in it so i don't oh, know good. what any of them are because okay. they didn't tell you but that yeah. is definitely in it but that's a batavian type which means you get these really nice oh, this is how we pick them taking off these outer leaves <laughs> that, bit that looks one. delicious but yeah it's all very edible <laughs> and um the, the the batavians have sort of rounder leaves compared to say the cos which have these much longer leaves can i have a taste yeah by all means it just looks so appetizing doesn't it oh <laughs> good and what I'll do also, um, while you're chomping away, is I'll pick it. Mm. That is delicious. Oh, good. I always say never serve your salad naked, which means never, never serve it without dressing on it. <laughs> but wow, this, well, we don't put, but this, yeah. you don't need anything with it. No. It tastes almost yeah. like it's got seasoning on it already. Oh, good. Yeah. Mm. It, yeah. So celery here. Yeah, celery. Um, what variety is this? Well, this one's called green sleeves, actually. Right. And. You see, it's quite light green, um, but it's not as big as I'd hoped. It's been so dry. Right, yeah. Even though we water it frequently. Would you so be happy sense. with um, this size? Um, I mean, yes. I mean, yeah, exactly. You want a little bit bigger, <laughs> but, but yeah. I, I remember last year I was picking my celery in August or September time, and they were real big, okay. beautiful heads of celery. Yeah, well, you did well because it was dry summer. Yeah. yeah. And do you know what we've been doing as well? Is taking all these top leaves and dehydrating them and then oh, uh, blending them into a bouillon. Nice, that's a Bright good green. Because yeah, really yeah, I was looking at, I'd been using this Swiss organic vegetable bouillon that we'd been buying and the one, yeah, yeah. This. And the ingredients, it's only 7% vegetables. 7%. Wow. Lot of us. Whereas if you make your own, you're sort of 93%. Yeah. <laughs> and, and most of the time you can make uh, your stock powder from just vegetable Discard. scraps. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just roast them and yeah. then just until they're dry and bake and then the spring onions, blend them up. So, yeah. I didn't realise that you actually multi-sow your onions. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, are they I from do... sets or seeds? 
No, no, from seed. That's wow, the beauty of it. Because I've, I've used to plant them from seeds. So I didn't know about growing from seed like this. And, and I'd always get a few bolters. More disease. Mm, I've got quite a few bolters from my sets this year, actually. Ah, okay. Yeah, so multi sow, uh, aim for a clump of four. They vary a bit depending how well they germinated. And you can see any type of onion you can do it with. And they push apart themselves just yeah, like beetroots. Yeah, well, well, as they are doing. And so you, what you do is though, you, you don't get giant, you don't get big ones, you get lots of medium ones. Mm. Uh, but you just get so many. <laughs> so it's a fantastic wow. yield. So how long have you been here at Homemakers? Because it seems like a lifetime of work almost. Uh, yeah, ten, ten and a half years. Oh, wow. Yeah. When I arrived, one of the first things I did was get by this greenhouse. Yeah, so th this is core of the garden, really. We've got a lot of seedlings coming ready or wow. like that's some spring onions sown just 10 days ago beetroot sown at the same time so again multi-sown yeah and then these trays are brilliant because i've got some i bought some of your some? ones yeah yeah oh, i've got great. the small of this size yeah. oh nice they're oh, really handy because you don't have to use as much compost in them well exactly they're so economical mm. ah the tomatoes yeah, look stunning they're a, a bit more yeah. advanced i've only had one well, red tomato so far i mean <laughs> you've got well, quite a few pretty good actually for early july <laughs> not bad I'll show you the ones in the polytunnel yes. though, because it's a bit different here and it would be more of a comparison with what you're doing. Before we go there though, I've just noticed this is your small oh, yeah. garden. I, I think this is really yeah. good for when you're doing your teaching online is oh, because thanks. this is so, it's so perfect and it's, it's such on a big scale mm. that people may get a little bit intimidated, yeah. intimidated. But what I'm realizing, I could have started growing food on my balcony when I lived in London. Why didn't I have a few buckets? Oh, right. But I didn't think I had the space. Yeah. But this small garden just proves how you can actually grow a load of food in, in, a, in a small yeah. plot. Yeah, it's 25 square meters. And a lot of people do say that actually. So they say, <laughs> this is more like the space I've got yeah. available. This was, until yesterday, this was cauliflower and calabrese, which I cleared and planted these French beans this nice. morning. And that was, tall peas, the tall sugar peas. Yeah. And so I cleared them and just planted these chicory for radicchio. Nice. And tomato, I harvested a potato already, been harvesting carrots, that was spinach, it's now cucumber. So that's partly what I'm trying to show is the succession. That's incredible. Yeah. And also it looks beautiful because I, my mum, for example, she is so hesitant to dig up her lawn. Oh. Obviously, she doesn't need to dig, she just yeah. needs to put the cardboard down. But I'm just like, oh, man, she's afraid it the look garden nice. would look yeah. so beautiful with, a, with yeah. all these flowers. You can grow a load of food in yeah. the garden and you don't have to go to the supermarket. Yeah. I want people to turn their lawns into Good. farms. Good. <laughs> look at that. Oh, that is simply That's stunning. I remember graffiti. last time I came here, you had a, some incredible cauliflowers, but look at the colour on that. Is that That's ready uh, to harvest now, right? That's ready. Yeah, that is stunning. But I need to harvest them, but look, there's a butterfly. <laughs> I did pick oh, one this morning, yeah. actually, and they had a caterpillar in it. <laughs> yeah, that's the, the scary They're side. They're just coming. Me. I've They're got my net, nets on ready this year, though. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Now, this is a forest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. Look at the watermelon. <laughs> the the, no, the melon, are, sorry. Yeah, these are Charente. They are um, different types. It's crazy it? to think that the weights can be it's held. impressive isn't it and I yeah. did, I've done your same technique where I put in the the string the string underneath actually oh, great. so fingers crossed oh, mine do good. the same but that is a sight to behold. Well they, they blow me away actually though but we've had that warm June this year and so it's been a bit unusual. That's a nice pepper um, it's called Sergeant Peppers. I Dragon. thought it was an aubergine at first. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, That's a tomato. It's a sort of purple blue tomato yeah. That um, is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, I could share some <laughs> seeds with you if you want. <laughs> Please. Yeah. But, but you can see how it's actually a very efficient plant because it's, it's very compact. It fits yeah. its space nicely. It doesn't sort of... What does it taste like? Uh, well, really good. It's very dense beef tomato, basically. And it stays this colour when you... When... Well, it goes darker. Uh, yeah, when they're ripe, they go really dark blue. It's the shape that is yeah. so uh, strange. Yeah, unusual. They're one of my favourites, the orange cherries over there. Yeah, I the spotted the cucumbers. They are ginormous. They're almost ready. Oh, I've picked a lot. Wow. Do you know, this morning I picked 15 cucumbers here. Uh, bigger than that, basically. Because um, I wait until they get more this that size. Is, oh, my but word. But even that one, a little bit bigger will be good. Maybe this one. They is. are. Uh, and they just grow in front of your eyes almost, don't they? They grow yeah, so don't quick. They? Well, these have been in the ground for seven weeks only. Wow. And they've already got. <laughs> oh, you are so much further ahead than me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so is this watermelon here? Yeah, that's watermelon on the ground. I think this is the one I'm growing. Early moonbeam. This variety. Early one. Yeah. Early, early moonbeam. Yeah, from real seeds. Brilliant. Yeah, that's the one that's I've got. Ye yellow flesh, there you are. Oh, so now I'm not so worried because mine's sort of sprawling everywhere. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, well, it's good you've seen that then. So I should explain that more in another video. <laughs> 
two different ways of doing it. And normally I, this is the most effective actually. Yeah, mine are about this big at the minute. Okay, it's just well, I would say that's good. Yeah. That's good, guys. For whales. Yeah, 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 and you've got time. <laughs> yeah. And this is onions for seed. Wow. So basically that's one onion makes all these stems. It's the reverse of multi sowing. <laughs> I think that's something that a lot of people forget actually and something that I didn't think about. I thought each year I have to be buying new seeds and it could get pricey. But actually every plant has the ability well, to produce yeah. a seed. It's, it's just it is a bit learning more than the, that. the technical side. Yeah, of it, right? absolutely. And the website we mentioned, Real Seeds, they've got really good advice, they do. haven't they? Yeah. I'd, I'd recommend anyone to, to read that first. Yeah. Like onions, you need uh, an appropriate number of onions to get enough genes in your gene pool to make right. viable seed. If you try to keep seed from one onion, it w it'll be inbred and it won't grow very oh, well. Oh, wow. This, do you grow this amazing tomato, Sungold? Um, I don't think I have, no. But uh, as it, I said to you, I was really bad labelling my tomatoes oh. this year. I could have anything, actually. It doesn't look familiar, then. No, it doesn't. And they, they're all, they don't go red, they just stay orange. No, this is ripe colour. Oh, wow. Yeah. Let's give it a taste. Oh, wow. Mm. That is incredible. It's much more than just a tomato, isn't it? It's quite fruity. It tastes like it has a little um, white wine vinegar on it. You know, it's like it's almost uh -huh. that it got that uh, finished sang. flavor. Yeah. Mm. And these are beautiful. Is Gardener's Delight, which I should have given you the other way around, but if you want to try that, that you'll notice lovely. the difference. Thank you. I mean, quite a lot of tomato flavor is just from the different varieties, taste so different. Uh, but also, the, the soil, I think, Ooh. does make a difference. You know, you get that extra. It's a little juicier. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, I prefer the orange one, actually. Well, I agree. People do taste tests on all these cherry tomatoes and nearly every time the sun gold comes top. So. Really? Do you still get that same satisfaction? You see, when I watch your videos, your, <laughs> your charisma, your energy is so positive and... Oh, that's nice. And uh, I... Well, I think that's why, yeah. Do I mean, you put it down simple. to having your hands in the soil? Uh, <laughs> Could be lots of things actually. You're just being here, yeah. Uh, in any garden, you, you know your bacillum vacca. Is... You taught me about, told me about oh, this. Okay. Yeah. So that helps to make serotonin feel so, good. So that's the chemical within the soil. Yeah, that, it's that... just a bacteria that's yeah in soil and floating around. We're probably breathing it in right now, and uh, it helps to make serotonin, the feel good mood in the brain. So it's I like get a asked much... a lot on my videos. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> They're all convinced I want something. Else. Oh, no, I don't, don't, don't drink much. Actually. Not growing anything suspicious around here. <laughs> <laughs> it's in that polytunnel. Well, you don't need to. <laughs> no. but yeah, it's, it's, so that it's almost like a natural, natural antidepressant then, being in the garden. Yeah, oh, definitely, <laughs> I would say that. And, and that whole nutritional discovery recently, quite about the soil biome, the biology mm. of the soil, being very similar to the biome, the, all the bacteria and everything in our guts. And so it makes sense then. We, you know, by, by default, any of your listeners who've got a garden, they'll be eating some of the soil biome yeah. some of because those microbes hang around and you can't wash them all off but don't even try <laughs> well, well I, I often got told oh why isn't he washing his vegetables ah. and I always used to say oh, well a little bit of dirt doesn't hurt and That's I think now that you're telling yeah. me this it makes sense because at yeah. the end of the day the whole cycle of compost yeah. and the soil it's yeah. it's just broken down old food anyway oh yeah we're a living compost <laughs> yeah so w what is wrong with a little bit of dirt yeah. I think only no, if it comes from your own garden I think well, I think that that's really important helps. to me yeah that really yeah. helps and, and also I say with no dig it's bigger another advantage of no dig you've got such healthy soil mm. such vibrant plants that you know, by definition the microbes are going to be good ones it all ties together like you say really nicely and that for me that's such an important part of it healthy plants healthy people in fact if we walk up here i could introduce it better i'm experimenting with um <clears throat> growing rye to make my bread ah yes i've seen this in your youtube so um last year i grew rye here i'm just using this patch just to demonstrate the size and this grew six loaves of bread six loaves of yes. bread that's a good way of uh, measuring it actually yeah. So in so this spot here attempt. where the carrots are, six loaves yeah, of bread. That so that's it. your next lot of rye This there. is my next, and, and I'd say seed from this, and they came up much more strongly. The growth wow. has been even better this year. Oh, so, wow, look at your um, squashes. Yeah, and this is actually, for no dig, this is interesting, because planted these squash only seven weeks ago, actually. So, uh, the reason I'm doing it here is because of bindweed. Uh, have you come across bindweed, or have you had that? I, I hear you talking about it a lot, but I don't know what it you is. So uh, I don't know what I don't know. If you'd show me what it is, maybe uh, I do have it. Yeah, well look. It's but right I hear here. it's one of your gripes. Right here. <laughs> and you see the difference between the bindweed growing in the grass. Ah, uh, yeah. So it's this plant. A bit of grass there. But... Uh, you go to bed dreaming about this, don't oh. you? You don't like this. Yeah. <laughs> um, and actually, if you look at the grassland around here, it's got lots of pink flowers in at the moment, and that's the bindweed flower. Oh. Okay. So. 
this probably sounds like a stupid question, but what are you doing with all this you're growing? So who do you supply? Oh, right. Well, the, these, in this case, actually, we use a lot of these um, on courses that I run here for lunches. Oh, that's nice. But I do five or six boxes a week uh, through the summer and autumn. And then I supply uh, a local shop, a spa shop in Bruton nearby. They take a huge I amount love of salad. I yeah, love Yeah, it's Bruton. great, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, lovely place. But as a chef, I mean, seeing this, I would love to be cooking with your, oh. your produce. Actually, today, I would love to cook for you if that's okay. Wow. <laughs> and I would love to cook something with some carrots because that was the first thing you ever grew. And I'm hoping oh, I can put a spin on a carrot that you've never Should we sort of harvest intrigued. some carrots? Then? Let's do that, yeah. Um, Brilliant. But on the way, I'll show you the pond yes. and the wormery. Yes, please. Oh, look at this pond. You can see the life in this one already. Yeah, I know. That's brilliant. And why is it important to have ponds on a garden? It is for life, isn't it? A different yeah. level of life and drinking water as well, even birds. We see quite a few birds. So this is your new compost area I saw on your videos. Yeah, I sound like I'm stalking you, them. but I'm just watching you <laughs> We've an moved awful lot. From over there. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I just have three bays. It's really simple. Uh, the pallets are just wired together at the corners. We took, taking the bottoms off, I find, really helps. Yeah. Uh, so this is not much more than eight months old. Um, that is incredible. When it fills with worms, you know you're doing oh, something yeah. right, don't you? <laughs> I actually noticed when I checked my compost heap yesterday, there was some worms ah, in there, it was good. over the moon. Excellent. The one thing I did notice though, this may be something that some viewers may find, I, I noticed there was like rodent holes within it. Is that ah. something to worry about? It is away from my house, so I'm not yeah. like well, too concerned. Personally, but... I wouldn't worry. It's a feature of compost making. Right. Uh, you haven't got a cat? Or? I don't know. No, I, should, okay. I, I mean, I don't cat? either, but one adopted me recently. She's oh, been, that's sweet. She caught a rabbit the other day. Oh, no way. Here she is. And what's their name? Minty. Minty. Uh, Hello. Beautiful. Oh, and, and she adopted you? Yeah, she appeared and um, oh. all my friends said, oh, you got to feed her then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she doesn't have a home. So I started feeding her and there we are. Oh. This is the famous wormery. <laughs> <laughs> and we're probably going to see a slow worm. Oh, yes. I mean, are you doing anything like this? I really want to start a uh, wormery. Oh, there, there they are. Where are they? Oh, look, right there's now. a gold. Oh, there's two. <gasps> yeah. Wow, they're beautiful. Well, I call that a snake. <laughs> okay. That's a legless lizard. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But yesterday I opened it up and there was a grass snake there. Wow. Literally right there. Yeah, they're, I've, they're I've very seen, shy. They didn't seen want a couple. Um, so tell so me about your this, worm yeah, farm. Yeah, this is quite unusual. What we've got here is, uh, normally we put not fresh stuff on, but we had this pea horn chopped up by the lawnmower. So right. uh, I just sort of put a bit of that on top. But so this I, is pea, sorry, pea stems? And yeah, stuff like pea that, stem right? and leaf um, after the, some peas had finished. Right. And we chopped them up with the lawnmower. That's, the lawnmower is really good. That, yeah. That's for the compost heat, really, mainly. That's what we're doing it for. This is the worm food. Oh. At the top, we've got the worm food, and then they're a little bit lower down eating. Ah. And below them is all their cast, which we harvest in the winter. And why is that good Up for the to... garden? Well, it's more for the propagation, I find. Right, so, so your seedlings. The seedlings ah. just grow like a rocket. Oh, I'd urge you to have a go, because... Yeah, I'd l I really the, want to start a worm growth farm. growth has been amazing. And we see now, as I'm getting down, it's mainly because we just fed them and put a lot on top. But there's, there's loads of worms here. That's, oh, them? wow. So do you ever put these worms in a bed, for example, just to... Or would no you always advantage. keep them here? I, I would see no advantage, because these right. are branding worms, which is fishermen's worms or uh, yeah. decomposing worms, basically. Yep. And the worms you get in soil that do the work that we want is um, Lumbr Lumbricus terrestris earthworms. Ah, the big fat pink ones. Yes, yeah. So these are the smaller red ones. So there you go. So Charles, you've been experimenting for a number of years, just having a a no dig bed next to what would you what would you call it a traditional bed or no, I call it a dig bed a dig bed yeah <laughs> dig or no dig I've actually said to my my friends if if this video gets a million views I'll get a no dig tattoo so <laughs> right, okay I may so try and listen if it gets mates. two million views we'll get you along too <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. I'm joking so Charles won't do it but I will yes, so anyway so. we've got a no dig bed on this side you got it yeah. yes well I can right tell because <laughs> Everything looks a little bit more healthy. Yeah, I mean, actually, not everything as it happens. Well, the cucumbers there are bigger, but there's, there's a backstory to all of this because a lot of what we're seeing here is second planting. So this one, yeah, no dig, compost on top, job done. This yeah. one, big effort of digging, <laughs> and I put the compost in the trenches I make while I'm digging. So when you're digging, the traditional way, is it just turning with a fork and then adding yeah, soil also, into it? Yeah, basically what, what you do is actually I take out a trench and put that soil in the wheelbarrow 
and then you've got a space and that wheelbarrow goes in the last trench when you get to the other end. Right. So I keep making the trenches and putting compost in them about that deep and work my way along. So basically there's the same amount of compost here, except it's been dug, dug and this one it. is the compost on top. Right, okay. Same plantings. And how long has this experiment been going on for, did you say? This is year 11. Wow. And, and, and 10 years of results, we've had uh, average 107 kilos, I think it is here, and 95 there. So this is, this is that's a considerable difference in, in terms of weight. percent difference. And what about flavour and taste? Do you notice anything? Ah. It's hard to say, no, I bet. Yeah. It is hard, and we've tried that, and it, not much. Yeah, yeah. But at least mean, already we've had nine kilos of potatoes there. So that's the second planting, which is the leeks. I think regardless of actually how much healthier or how much abundant it is, even though it is, I think just the time and the effort that goes into no dig is yeah. so much more enjoyable than actually having to dig and this is why I've messing spent, up this. Yeah, I'm puzzled why it hasn't taken off more quickly, actually. Well, I think you're making <laughs> some real serious strides to, uh, oh, to well, change I'm that. Very happy to hear that. <laughs> Great. Oh, that's incredible. So can I cook for you, Charles? Yes, please. <laughs> can, we harvest some, can we harvest some carrots first? Because obviously that was the first thing you ever grew. So I have yeah. to, this is going to be a celebration of Charles's carrots. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> I'm glad blenders were invented. They're supposed to be serving up right now. This is a nightmare. <laughs> oh no. This is adding pressure to my cooking for my hero. Let's get undercover, guys. <laughs> <laughs> 